Hey, ELD for with Brainstorm MTG here with some weekly legacy. This was filmed live at Scholars and broadcast on Twitch TV at Brainstorm MTG. And this week we have Manalus Dredge on camera versus a variety of different decks. Uh, Manalus Dredge is a type of combo deck, however, can also play really grindy games. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways this can play. Of course, it is considered to be a glass cannon. There are cards that completely shut down. Manalus Dredge in its entirety. Cards like Rest in Peace and Graft Digger's Cage, you really can't win once those are on board if you haven't already established a presence. Uh, so that is something to look out for if people can land those haymakers in the sideboard. You're going to have some counter magic to try and prevent that. And of course, if you're able to get going, you might be able to win with what you have on board, and you can always use Cabal Therapy to strip answers out of their hand. But getting going is the trick. So here we have Kyle on Merfolk. He actually has that in multiple formats. Uh, he picked up the pieces so he doesn't have to be switching back and forth in between Modern, Standard, and Legacy. Uh, this is a true fish connoisseur. And actually that looks like uh, that's not the right deck. All right, so he's actually he's just going to go ahead and put that back. That's, that's Modern Burn. Um, looks like he was jamming some games before the match. Uh, no worries. Uh, while that is happening, I'd like to thank Kyle from Scholars Games for, of course, being such a uh, strong supporter of Eternal formats, both Vintage and Legacy. Uh, this weekend, the 10th, I'm sorry, the yes, the 10th for Legacy. Uh, we've got so many to keep track of. Uh, so as of the recording of this, we have a Legacy tournament this upcoming weekend and the following weekend, February 17th. Uh, we're having a vintage tournament, and that is going to be a monthly occurrence, both vintage and legacy, uh, really trying to uh, support and bring back those formats to the, the peaks that we've seen in the past. And uh, it's really exciting to see the community starting to, to grow again. So here we've got Merfolk from Kyle. Of course, no islands on my side, no lands for that matter, so we're not going to see any island walk. And all right, so we're a couple couple minutes in, and we're getting some starting hands now. Manalus Dredge very rarely mulligan, so if you've never played against it before, uh, what you're basically going to be looking for is a discarded dredger at the end of your draw step. So you want to be on the draw, you want to discard a dredger, and then you're either going to be cycling Street Wraith to set up a very explosive turn two, or you're going to use your natural draw step to dredge and then hopefully hit more dredgers and start to just chain into more and more cards going into the graveyard. Uh, this particular build runs a full set of Balistrad Spy and what that card does is allows you to mill your entire deck. So we'll see uh, if that happens here or if it's just a grindy win using Zombies and Icarids, Nether Shadows. Uh, so Chancellor of the Annex uh, being reviewed there. Uh, that is a card that is very important to the list. It can actually really slow down cards like Deathrite Shaman, which can be very disruptive. Here, however, Kyle has it beat two different ways. He has Cavern of Souls and Chalice. So playing Chalice at zero, he only needs to pay the extra one mana for it to resolve. Uh, the other option could have been to just jam a Merfolk using Cavern of Souls, and that also would have worked. Of course, it looks like he was trying to set up for Aether Vial. If he was familiar with Manila's Dredge, uh, he actually would have been able to just let that Chalice get countered and play that Vial on turn one. So we'll see if that Temple loss ends up being hugely important. Uh, this list not running any type of Lotus Petals or Lion's Eye Diamonds like a regular Dredge deck. And here we have a Force of Will, along with a few different Merfolk, Lord of Atlantis. I'm not going to have any Islands, so he is going to pump the team but not give Evasion. Uh, looked like a Silvergill Adept, which is going to be able to draw an extra card and keep the beats coming. And then a new addition uh, from Ixalan. It is a uh, essentially a 2-2 two -two Merfolk for one green. It's a 1-1 one -one that gets a plus one, plus one if you have another Merfolk or an island. Uh, so that is always going to be a 2-2 two -two in this deck for the most part. Uh, though, funny enough, not in this particular scenario because he has not found an island yet. Uh, so go ahead and dredging off of Gataxian Probe, setting up an explosive turn. Uh, we've got Narcomoeba coming in off of the trigger. Gataxian Probe, very, very powerful in this deck, giving your 
information about what's in your opponent's hand for Cabal Therapy, and also furthering your game plan. Uh, so we've got a couple of probes there, and it looks like a, a third probe getting back another Golgari Grave Troll, hitting Bridge from Belows and Balistrad Spy, another Narc Amoeba, and another Bridge from Below. So for those unfamiliar, Bridge from Below is going to be able to generate a tremendous amount of uh, card advantage and board presence in this type of deck. Anytime one of my creatures die, any non-token creature, I'm going to get 2-2 two, two zombies equal to the number of bridges in the graveyard. So if I have 4 Bridge from Below, sacrificing a Narco Amoeba to Cabal Therapy takes a 1-1 one, one flyer and turns into 8 damage worth of zombies on the ground. And that is what we're going to see here, a Cabal Therapy. And that Force of Will is going to go either way. It's up to Kyle. He can force if he wants, or he can just let me take that out of his hand. But that card has to go. We're going to be looking at Dread Return very shortly. And there's not a lot Kyle's going to be able to do to stop that. This is a very, very solid start for Manalus Dredge. Kyle just wrapping his brain around the coming plays. At this point, he may just be looking for more information about the exact type of list that I'm playing. And Cabal Therapy is going to get rid of that Force of Will. Such iconic art. That contrast of the red and yellow up against the blue card frame. Really recognizable from across the room. And we've got a flashback of, let's see here. Dread Return. Alright, so sacrificing the zombies and the Narco Amoeba to get Balistrad Spy. And we've got some fireworks here. This is exactly what we're hoping for. Balistrad Spy has that lethal trigger. It's going to mill until a player hits a land. I'm going to target myself, and I run no lands. Uh, so we are going to actually see exactly how this deck works here when it goes well, hitting two more Narco Amoebas. That's all four bridges in the graveyard. And from here, looks like those three bodies are going to the graveyard. That's going to generate 12 more zombie tokens. And there's a few different options here. We'll see which path to victory. So there's the Dread Return. And there's the Flamekin, the uh, most streamlined answer there. Plus one, plus one in haste to all of those zombies, and that is a lethal blow. And those are the type of decks that Manila's Dredge can really punish for trying to play a fair game. Uh, decks like Death and Taxes, Merfolk, uh, Check Pile, anything that's trying to actually win with creature beats, Manila's Dredge does have the ability to generate a massive amount of onboard presence. And that can happen either through comboing out like we just saw, or it can happen just the slow route. A card like Icarid can really serve as a powerful engine recurring every single turn and prize the Amalgam and Nether Shadow to a lesser degree, uh, just being able to sacrifice them to cards like Cabal Therapy or just lose them in combat and being able to just generate token after token. Of course, Dread Return, when it does fire off, usually lethal, but there are some solid targets aside from comboing out with this deck. Uh, you can target the Chancellor of the Annex, which can wreak havoc on many of the, the stronger decks in the format, making all of their spells cost one more. So essentially a very, very beefy Thalia. Uh, and then on the other side, you've got Golgari Great Troll, which is just massive beats. Uh, of course, you don't have any mana, so you won't be able to regenerate him, but he's usually so large that that is not a consideration. Not unusual for him to have over 40 power once you have enough creatures in the graveyard. Uh, here, Force of Will is a consideration. Uh, it looks like I jammed those in there. And we'll see if they actually stay in. Uh, that is a tactic that I will do on occasion. If I am not going to sideboard, I'll generally just throw some cards in and then shuffle and then remove the cards that I put in. Force of Will, of course, easy to find uh, with that iconic art. And it looks like I'm going to decline to actually play those. Uh, there's not a lot that is likely that Kyle could have that would be a huge problem. Uh, Graph Digger's Cage, uh, not really great with Aether Vial. 
uh, cards like Tormod's Crypt can be played around, and it's usually not worth Force of Willing uh, going below the seven cards to discard at the end of each turn. Actually, more problematic than just having to play around a Tormod's Crypt. They'll generally have to crack it early, and then you'll just be able to rebuild. Hello, this is Eric. Hello. All right, we may have to get that out in post. All right, so Kyle looking here, hoping to have some type of graveyard hate, no dice, uh, so he is going back. Of course, Mandalay's Dredge very rarely wants to mulligan, almost always wants to actually keep those seven cards and use that discard step. Uh, one really important thing, if you are playing against Mandalay's Dredge, you want to take the draw. Uh, Mandalay's Dredge has no plays available to it on the first turn. Uh, currently, uh, there are ways that you could potentially punish that. Uh, cards like Lion's Eye Diamond could turn it into a little bit of a faster deck, but if you don't have that in your opening hand, it's not much of a strategy. So, currently, not trying out that type of plan. But I am toying with the idea of both Lion's Eye Diamond and Faithless Looting to give the deck some really explosive first turns and have all of those fairer decks on their back heels. Uh, but that's only good when it actually works. Otherwise, it's aggressively bad as it is a bunch of bricks going into your graveyard. You want all the cards going into your graveyard to be as useful as possible. Either dredgers or flashback spells or creatures that are actually going to be impacting the game. Right, Kyle looking at six and going to five. Five starts to get very, very dicey here. There's not a lot of cards that matter in this matchup greatly, uh, so he's really looking to slow me down. A uh, card like Surgical Extraction can be very strong. Graph Digger's Cage. All right, so Kyle mulling all the way down to five here. Very grim situation. A lot of decks find themselves in this type of uh, gambit when they're playing against a deck like Manalus Dredge. They really want to draw a sideboard card that can interact with it favorably, and if they're unable to find that, it really is punished. Uh, so here, looks like he's got Force of Will in his hand, hoping to stop a really broken start. In general, though, Manalus Dredge is able to just completely ignore counter magic with cards like Cabal Therapy. And it looks like a Breeding Pool. Of course, would be better in this particular deck as a Tropical Island. Uh, however, for budget reasons, we have a Breeding Pool and a Curse Catcher. And that is a card that can interact very favorably with this deck that is better than Force of Will and that it is going to be able to stay on board. It can sacrifice to counter Dread Return and it also will remove the bridge from Belows from the graveyard when it does go to the bin. So uh, we've got a blue-green fast land, uh, botanical something I believe there. And that is going to give him access to all the mana he needs for the game. For the most part all of his spells are going to cost two or less. Uh, so dredging here, we see a dread return, and we get a narcomiba. So building the board presence here. And we'll see 
if this is going to be another super explosive game. It is not. We're just going to discard Stinkweed Imp and pass the turn. Versus a Mulda 5. Very likely good enough. But another Curse Catcher. That is going to make comboing out nearly impossible. Uh, so at this point, it's going to have to be about generating card advantage on the board with recursion creatures. That That is pretty much the, the switch here. You know, at the point where you're facing down two curse catchers and potential card uh, uh, removal. <clears throat> All right, so taking a look at Icarid. Verifying what is going to be happening. Icarid, such a powerful engine for generating a board presence. And we have a Lord. This is the new blue-green Lord from Rivals of Ixalan, or Ixalan. Uh, still very new. Uh, we got four damage coming in with those Curse Catchers, declining a block. And during the upkeep, we have an Icarid coming back. And that is going to be removing Street Wraith, the usual suspect. Street Wraith has no real ability after it's been cycled. Uh, pretty much never going to want to dread return it, though it does have Swamp Walk, that is a corner case. There are plenty of board states that get very muddled, uh, so I suppose that is possible, but in general you're going to be hitting uh, a card that actually just wins the game instead of chips away for three. All right, so a couple of bodies here. Dread Return, really not the most attractive option, though I do not have the, the three creatures yet. Swinging with Icarid, uh, declining to block with the Lord, and then let's see if there's any post-combat shenanigans here. Going to have a Cabal Therapy, and that is going to take out a Curse Catcher. Uh, so Kyle protecting that Force of Will in his hand. Perhaps a Flusterstorm, who knows what else. Alright, discarding Cabal Therapy, end of turn. I've got plenty of Dredgers over there, so that is no longer a concern. And at 2 mana, looks like another Lord. So the Lords just keep coming. Not going to be any shortage of Lords in this build. Access to all of the best team players that Merfolk has ever had, both blue and green. And it looks like six more damage comes through. Prized Amalgams coming in during the end step and Icarid. So lots of board presence here. And dredging Grave Troll, seeing another Grave Troll, prized amalgam, multiple prized amalgam, three prized amalgams. Oh no, that is a huge problem. Uh, so Nether Shadow for sure is going to be able to come back. Has plenty of creatures on top of him. The text on Nether Shadow: if there are three or more creatures on top of it uh, during your upkeep, you get to return it for free, and it has haste. Uh, different than Icarid in that it is also a very useful blocker. Uh, so those prized amalgams will be coming back then. So during the upkeep of the next turn, we've got Nether Shadow, and then those prized amalgams, uh, prized amalgams will trigger. So this is a very dire situation here, and Icarid's gonna send in another six damage, and. Going to go ahead and fire off that other Cabal Therapy, which was discarded. Now Kyle, faced with the decision, does he let it resolve and hope that I miss? Uh, that Force of Will is almost certainly what I'll be naming. Losing the board presence, not as exciting, uh, given that that Curse Catcher has now gotten all the way up to a 3-3. And it looks like he's actually going to Force of Will protecting that last card in his hand.
and this is post combat. And we're going to go ahead and probe from hand. We get to see that that last card is a Master of the Pearl Trident. I'm going to try and hit a Cabal Therapy if we want to get rid of it. But it actually may not be that relevant here. It's seven life. Now there are three blockers. So with only three attackers, worst case scenario can actually sacrifice the whole team. We'll see if there's any bridge from belows in there. Contemplating a dread return. Dread return, of course, can be stopped by the curse catcher which is effectively a force of will on a stick in this matchup. So we're closing in to the end step here, or the end game, I should say. We have Merfolk with a very strong board presence. Mana is dredged down to seven life, eight life for Merfolk. Someone must fall. Doing a quick combat check. That Master of the Pearl Trident face up on the right side of the board is in Kyle's hand. Having been revealed off of Gataxian Probe. So perfect information here. Only two mana available to Kyle. So the most likely line is just playing that Lord. And not a lot of cards would be better than that for him. That he could draw on his turn. So he's going to the end step. Icarid is dying and getting... A singleton zombie off of the one bridge from below. And then those three prized amalgams. So a very dangerous untapped step coming. Figuring out which card to discard. And it looks like it's going to be the... combo piece and we've got another lord okay so perfect information here with the singleton bridge I can actually just go ahead and block with all of those untapped creatures uh, generating replacements and of course every creature that Kyle attacks with is going to be one less blocker uh, so with this game state, this game is all but over. He's got to have a decision to send them or leave them home. At this point, his best bet may just be to attack and hope that I miscount some of the merfolk buffs and accidentally take lethal, uh, because this is this is gonna do it. Manalist Dredge able to assemble a full suite of creatures here, all for prized amalgams, Narcomoebas, Icarids coming back, zombie tokens. It's a whole zoo of the undead. And they have feasted upon the fish here. So Kyle just really making sure he's not missing any possible lines here. Looks like he's going to be passing. So we are trying out some new things here at Brainstorm MTG. Uh, if you enjoy this type of commentary, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. I've already been getting some great feedback. You'll notice that the volume from the matches that we're watching has been turned down uh, to try and make things a little bit more clear. And we'll see how that comes out this week and really committed to just kind of evolving the coverage here and spreading the joy of vintage and legacy magic. Really any format that you can sleeve up Brainstorm, I'm on board. All right, let's see here. 
counting out the recur returning creatures, making sure that this is going to be lethal. And here we go. Here is what should be the final turn of the match, barring a surgical extraction or such. Uh, we've got Icarids coming back, Nether, uh, Nether Shadow. So much damage here. Of course, four of these creatures are going to be able to be blocked. Uh, even if those prized amalgams are taken out of the mix here, that is still lethal. And there is another Narcomoeba. So there we go. An attack step. Looks like at least 11 damage is going to get through if he blocks the largest creatures. So that's going to do it, unless he has some type of super spicy tech. A card like Snag, or... <laughs> There's not too much that'll, that'll save you from this. There we go, just verifying that those last four getting blocked means lethal still comes through, and there's the handshake. Uh, so that is a tough way to go out in round one there, mulling to five versus one of the tougher matchups for the deck. Uh, we'll never really know what his sideboard options were, uh, so I'll, let's see here. Let's see if we can actually see what he was digging for. And Graft Digger's Cages. So interesting choice. Uh, poor synergy with the Aether Vial. But uh, an option nonetheless. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Uh, this has been ELD with Brainstorm MTG. I hope you enjoyed the video. And we will be back with the next video.